Kaha Mai Kako, a Kama Mighty Curtain Call, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. The latest show at the Schaefer International Gallery of the Maui Arts and Cultural Center is an invitational featuring 10 Kanaka O'ibi from throughout Hawaii and the mainland. These artists are attempting to honor the time gone before through the use of traditional materials and techniques and reinterpreting them for the time yet to come. The hope is to pass down fundamental stories and the history of the ancestors while recognizing and preserving the Kanaka O'ivi identity into the future. Gallery director Nida Bangader, who is retiring after 23 years, leading one of the state's premier visual arts galleries, told me, quote, I wanted to put together a multi-generational group with mixed approach to material through both traditional and imaginative approach, and also a gender balance, and the ability to conceptualize the idea of Ike and Maoku Ohu. Also, the bilingual approach sets the tone to Ololo Hawaii and what was taken slash lost and reinserts it into the consciousness of this place and awareness as a goal of what needs to return, unquote. Over 23 years, Mrs. Bangreder has given us 152 remarkable exhibits. And with this one, her swan song, she is certainly going out with a bang. This show is beautiful in every respect. Entering the gallery, one will see the stonework of Hoaka de los Reyes. Here is Mo'o Lono, the Hawaiian god of the harvest, abundance, and more. Mo'o means lizard. Here we see Lono shape-shifting into a lizard. This is Hanao Pahaku Ao Pele. See how she rests on what the artist tells us, quote, for Hawaiians, the stone is the embodiment foundation of land and represents life before, life now, and life tomorrow, unquote. These are extremely powerful works. This is the work of Kavika Lum Naimida. Entitled Ovai, it is an Ahuula cape sculpture, which we are told represents the relationship between Kumu, teacher, and student, Hamana. It is on ohia, an endemic species, and pine wood, with feathers from rooster tails, chickens, goose, grizzly, furnace saddle, and marabou. It is unfinished, we are told, quote, awaiting the next cultural practitioner to be guided, unquote. It is a striking work. Hula ki'i, Hawaiian puppetry, is an endangered hula form. Ali'i Mitchell tells us there are only eight hula halau still practicing this form. He has given us a magnificent display of tapa, also known as kappa, because Hawaiian does not have a T in its 12-letter alphabet, hence a T is a K in Hawaiian. On display are puppets wearing tapa kihei, depicting kihei lololo. We are told is a, quote, modern-day molelo that speaks of a particular kaukaali'i named lololo, who was always dressed in the finest tapa, a garment known as the kihei lololo, or the long kihei scented with the fragrant niub flowers and decorated with the modest design of the time, unquote. There is a card in a holder at the beginning of this part of the exhibit that will inform the viewer and identify the works. The display is one which is an intellectual and aesthetic journey you will not soon forget. The prints coupled with kappa display along with the puppets, demonstrate an exceptional depth and breadth of skill and artistry. Lao hala were used by the ancient Hawaiians as rope, sails, and mats for their hale. Today, hats are made of lao hala. Here, we have a lao hala cape, painstakingly woven by Maui's own pohaku ka'o ohanohano. From hala trees, he planted eight to 10 years ago in Kahaku Loa. Here he has revived and refined an ancient craft form, and by transforming the material from bird feathers to laohala, he has created a glorious piece of fine art. The title of the work is a play on words. It is entitled Ka Ahu Lao Hala. He tells us an ahu is a protective garment. Ahu Lao is a term for a pandemic. Hala also means to pass. He interprets this as, quote, a protective mantle made during a pandemic that is now passing from our lives, unquote. Thank God. Kumu Ka'o Ahanohano discovered his family, which had been weaving back three generations, had abandoned the practice for four decades. He determined to become a practitioner as well as a teacher, 
and he has more than succeeded. Another artist who has transformed and reinterpreted a sacred piece of Hawaiiana is Bernice Akamine. She is a distinguished artist and scholar, having served as a visiting artist at the Smithsonian Institution National Museum of the American Indian. They need to change that name. She was also a community scholar for the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, doing stabilization work on the tapa collected by the Wilkes Exploring Expedition, 1838 to 42. She also got access to Captain Cook's Hawaiian collections. This got her interested in other tapa collections at other museums. Here she has taken a quilt design started by Queen Lilio Kalani when she was imprisoned in the Iolani Palace in 1895. She removed the personal messages the Queen put into her original design. She stripped, beat, cut, then stitched the tapa over months. Look at each of these panels to see the remarkable skills she has. The result is this remarkable work that captures the Queen's pure spirit, strength, as well as her disarming charm using ancient materials in a contemporary way. Now we come to the work of Solomon Enos. He has four sculptures, Poe Mua. They represent and continue the dialogue of indigenous sci-fi. These are hybrids of humans and plants. Quote, we come from Haloa, the mythological stillborn child of Wakea, and his daughter Ho'o Kukalani, who when buried became Taro. And their next child, also named Haloa, was the ancestor of the Hawaiian people. And we will return to Haloa, unquote. The idea of plants and their evolution is a wider and universal message that seeks a harmonious path for our species where light and water and healthy soils are of utmost importance. And then he has these drawings in graphite and ink as well as paintings, which come from his fictional work including Cosmic Ki'i of the Millennium, Herders and Hunters, Polyphantastica, Paraverse, Wild Robot Series, and Bio Gladiators of the Seventh Millennium. There is a video of Mr. Enos, a native Hawaiian from Oahu, drawing some of the selections from the Polyfantastica, where the viewer may come to appreciate the extraordinary artistry of this gifted and expert artist. The surety with which he creates, you will note, not once does he pick up an eraser. Every stroke of his pencil, every line of ink is practiced and purposeful. Now we come to the work of Lehuakea. She is a native Hawaiian Japanese. In this work, she honors both cultures, she tells us, through kappa making and mulberry paper. She has three pieces, two are kappa kusudama. According to Wikipedia, kusudama, literally medicine ball, is a paper model that is usually, although not always, created by sewing multiple identical pyramidal units together using underlying geometric principles of polyhedra to form a spherical shape. Alternately, the individual components may be glued together. Occasionally, a tassel is attached to the bottom for the decoration. The term kusudama originates from ancient Japanese culture where they were used for incense and potpourri, possibly originally being actual bunches of flowers or herbs. The word itself is a combination of two Japanese words, kusuri, medicine, and tama, ball. They are now typically used as decoration or as gifts and the other, which is a diptych, is framed. It is entitled Keikeiki o Halavai Elua, Fatatsu no Chihesen no Ko, or Child of Two Horizons. For her paints, she utilizes earth pigments, wildfire charcoal, and gold watercolor on kappa. Again, we are presented with unique work that honors the past while living in the present and looking into the future. Other notable work in this show includes Kori Kamehana Okala Holt Taum, Meliana Aluli Meyer, and Kala Iakea M. Blakemore. The show is open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. until March 18th. The gallery is also open until 7.30 p.m. for Select Castle Theater and Yokouchi Pavilion shows. Admission is free. The gallery will be closed Sunday, February 12th. On Sunday, February 26th, from 10 a.m. to noon, there will be a Hanao Hao Kao Hula Ki'i performance by Kumu Hula Ali'i Mitchell and the Halal O Kahi Vahiva in the McCoy Studio Theater. Tickets are available at MauiArts.org. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho! Thank you.